So we're with Sahail Ahmad, thank you for being here today. Can you tell me the name of your company and where you're based? Sure. Uh, my name is Sohail Ahmed and I'm visiting here from the United Kingdom for Financial Network. Can you let me know what Financial Networking does? Yes, uh, so Financial Network is a platform that's reinventing investment banking. So what we're trying to do is help companies that want to raise capital get access to capital at a lower cost and at a faster uh, pace. Okay. Um, and what subject matter do you look to invest in? Are you more blockchain oriented or AI? Well, we're, it's a balance between blockchain and AI. Uh, what we're most in, uh, interested in is the business model as well as the team and uh, what problem are they trying to solve. Okay. And, uh, um, can you expand a little bit more on that? What is the British model? Well, essentially, you know, with the focus on AI, blockchain, there's different use cases. So what we're looking for are use cases in financial services, uh, as well as medicine, consumer products. And the key for us is to be able to see how you can commercialize the technology. Uh, because the technology is great, but the business model has to make sense. Right, because you can build the tech, but if nobody will come, you know, it's, it's not much good. Um, and when you're looking to invest in these companies, what sort of stage would you prefer these companies to be in? Yes, so many of the companies that we are looking at will have a beta or they will have uh, a product that's available for testing. Uh, we don't necessarily get involved in just concept stage companies. Now, although depending on the um, success of the team, the credibility of the team, we will look at it. But I think the best opportunities are where the team has bootstrapped and they've built the product that is now ready for us to test and take into the market. So you're looking at later stage companies? Yes, so uh, companies that are at a beta stage. So uh, that are beyond the dream idea. Yeah. So you need more than a white paper <laughs> to yes. compare. And what are a couple of challenges you think that these um, companies have when, when they approach you? Sort of? Okay, that's a great question because uh, the typical problem we see with a lot of these companies is that they don't have a team, a business team. Um, you know, they, they'll have technical founders or co-founders. Uh, they may have a few advisors, but they don't really have the management or the business skills on the team that they need to execute because they can develop the product, but then they don't know how to sell the product or the platform and make it useful to the marketplace. Um, a lot of what most people have been saying is the issue of um, seeding through the reputable firms. Um, do you have any comments on this and when it comes to sort of legitimacy of the companies that you, you invest in? Yes. Um, that's a great question because I think unfortunately the industry has been tainted with the ICO boom right in 2017. So a lot of people were able to raise a lot of money who should not have been able to raise a lot of money. So now I think the marketplace is a little bit mature. What we look for at the end of the day is uh, the people. You know, we're investing in the people. So we look at the credibility of the people, um, the track record of the people, the education, and um, you know, what they've done. Because that helps us determine you know, what is the likelihood of them being successful. Because it's, it's a probability. We know that 80% of the businesses are not going to be successful in five years, right? So. So being at the summit, what have you um, gotten from it? Um, can you share your thoughts on that? Sure. Yeah, no, this is actually my first time in Malta. So it was uh, you know, really nice to see this country, beautiful country, as well as being able to attend the summit. Uh, you get different perspective because being in the UK, you know, we, we don't get as much of an international audience. So here, you know, we've got people from all over the world. Um, and uh, to see the different perspectives and you see some companies that are trying to do the same thing so it's nice to see the different angle that they're taking uh, but also look at some of the uh, regulation uh, the regulatory framework the the changes that are happening in the marketplace and how the companies are adopting so such as IEOs STOs and how the market's moving to kind of a, a different type of token offering I'm glad you mentioned the regulatory framework. Can you comment on the sort of blockchain um, regulation that's in Malta? Um, what are your comments on that? Yes, uh, well, I had an opportunity to listen to the Prime Minister and the Honorable Finance Minister yesterday. So I think that what they've uh, done in terms of actually having, a, um, I think, a holistic framework, that's the first um, uh, regulatory framework for blockchain, uh, is a great step forward. So I think that just gives us the rule book. Because the problem in the UK, as an example, is that we really don't know what the rules are in terms of ICOs and, and the tax implications. 
Uh, so now in Malta has taken the lead. So now we know what the tax implications are. We know what the requirements are to file. So that gives credibility to the marketplace. So I think Malta can position itself as uh, truly as a blockchain island. As an investor, is this quite an exciting environment for you? Definitely. So as an investor, I just now I know that the companies that are going to go through the ICO framework here in Malta, that they are serious, they're legitimate, they've taken the time and effort to register their white paper, to work with advisors, um, so that way they're not going to be fly by night or you know they're taking the whole process seriously. So uh, we would be much more willing to work with a company that's registered, going through the process, than a company that is not. And last of all, we're closing the end of the second day of the summit. Can you tell me what, what has been your experience been so far? Yes, well, I've had a really good experience and it's been a balance of meetings and uh, attending some of the sessions. I met some really interesting people from, you know, from China to um, Singapore to America, right? So it's uh, been a really good experience. I think uh, the key there is that, um, you know, to be able to expand and get as much diverse opinion. And, uh, you know, we actually had a speaker earlier who was speaking in Chinese, Dr. Wang, right? That was really interesting. And we had a translator. So I've never had that at a conference, right? Where somebody spoke and the other one was translating. So it was nice to get that perspective. That's really good to hear. It's been really nice talking to you. Same here. Thank you very much, Becca. No